Good morning, I'm the Reverend Amy Richter. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for Sunday, November 22nd. Today I am joined by the Reverend Joe Pagano, who is giving our sermon, and parishioners Ed and Debbie Humber and Lloyd Hollett, who are leading our music, Wanda Osmond, who is doing our reading, and Marilyn Simmons, who is leading our prayers. Thank you very much for joining us today. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Manite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. This is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. from the book of Ezekiel, 
chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so will I was, I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the in inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. This is Psalm 100. the good 
good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today on the church calendar, we celebrate Christ the King. A wonderful thing to celebrate, but also something a little puzzling to me as someone who has no real experience with kings or with royalty. However, for the last couple of years, Amy and I lived in South Africa, where there are, in fact, several living kings. After the fall of the apartheid regime and the making of a new constitution in the mid-1990s, seven traditional kingdoms were recognized in South Africa. They have limited political power in the whole of the nation, but have significant power and authority in the local affairs of their people. Now, I must say, I, this was really fascinating to me because it was so unfamiliar to me. For example, during our last year, we lived in KwaZulu-Natal, which is the traditional homeland of the Zulu nation. When you fly into Durban Airport, you land at King Shaka International Airport named after Shaka Zulu, who was the king who reigned from 1816 to 1828. The present king is Goodwill Kabeku Zulu. As king, he is head of a trust that administers about a third of the land in all of KwaZulu-Natal. He has six wives and 28 children. He has several palaces, each of his queen, 
Each of his queens needs their own palace. He has a fleet of luxury cars and receives an annual income over, of over 71 million rand to manage his household. He is reckoned to be the fifth wealthiest king in all of Africa. And just north of Zululand is the independent nation of Eswatini. It is an absolute monarchy. It used to be known as Swaziland. In 2018, however, King Maswati III renamed the country on the occasion of his 50th birthday and the 50th anniversary of the country's independence. He has 15 wives and 23 children, receives the equivalent of $61 million a year to manage his household, has a fleet of luxury vehicles, and an estimated net worth of $200 million. I guess as the saying goes, it's good to be the king. <laughs> now, perhaps you can see why I'm a little puzzled by the claim that Christ is king. He had no wives or children. He had nowhere to lay his head. He traveled by foot. And I don't think he had much of anything that we would think of in terms of wealth or possessions. Maybe he had some tools of his trade. Certainly nothing like the wealth and possessions of earthly kings. What kind of king is Jesus? In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus is depicted as the heavenly king. He describes the day of judgment when the Son of Man will come in glory and sit on his throne before all the nations who will be gathered in front of him. And then, of course, comes the sorting of the sheep and the goats. The sheep to Jesus' right hand will be welcomed into the kingdom prepared for them from the foundation of the world. And the goats to Jesus' left hand will be told to, to depart from Jesus to that other place that we'd rather not think too much about. So a couple of um, important things to note about this. First, um, I want to be a sheep. <laughs> Please, Lord, make me a sheep. <laughs> Second, um, Christ the heavenly king does seem to wield great power in this story, right? He gets to separate the sheep from the goats, those who will enter into eternal life and those who will not. That is very powerful stuff. And so Christ, the heavenly king, is powerful. And did I mention I want to be a sheep? <laughs> but there's also a surprise twist to this story of Christ the King. It's found in the reasons that the Son of Man will give for who gets in and who doesn't. He says to the sheep, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Christ the heavenly king who will come and sit on his throne of glory is found on earth in the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. On earth, Christ the king is not found in high places places of power and prestige, places of earthly glory, but rather in the least of these, in the most vulnerable of the earth, in the places we would least expect to find a king. Mother Teresa speaks of this as Christ in his distressing disguise. So we have this great mystery. 
this great paradox of faith. Christ, the King, is found in the weakest, the least, the most vulnerable people and places on earth. Not in palaces or on private jets or in glittering dynasties, but in the hungry and thirsty, the sojourner, the sick, the prisoner. And there is one final twist to this story of Christ the King. The sheep and the goats didn't even realize they were encountering Christ. The sheep say, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? The sheep did these things for Christ, and they didn't even know it. And the flip side is also true for the goats. They didn't do these things for Christ, and they didn't even know it. So again, I ask, what kind of king is this? Christ, the King, the Lord of heaven and earth, meets us in the weakest, the least, the most vulnerable on the earth. And even then, he doesn't make himself known. He is present, but in his distressing disguise. How different this is from earthly kings who seem to want to surround themselves with as much pomp and glory as possible, who want everyone to know who they are, who want to have their names plastered everywhere. What kind of king is Christ? I suppose he is the type of king who will be born in a stable and laid in a manger, who will proclaim good news to the poor and release to the captives, who will heal the sick and feed the hungry, who will have supper with sinners and tax collectors, and who will suffer and die for us and for our salvation. On earth, Jesus is the king who reigns from a cross. And when this king comes in glory to judge the quick and the dead, the most pressing question he will ask does not seem to be whether you are Anglican or not, or whether you liked traditional worship or contemporary worship, or whether your theology was orthodox or not. Rather, the most important question seems to be, what did you do for the least of these who are members of my family? All thanks and praise to Christ our King this day and always. Amen. We are singing number 141 from the Junior Praise, Jesus' Name Above All Names.
of the People, Litany 6, Book of Alternative Services, page 115. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. This is Jesus Shall Reign Where Ere the Sun.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.